Even if you have not experienced a free fall, you may have experienced uh, dry force or air resistance when you ride a bicycle. We will learn it in this video. Dry force or air resistance. Here I have an airplane acted by rightward thrust force of the engines and also a drag force. Drag force is the opposition of the air against the motion. It's highly affected by the shape of the airplane by the density of the air and also the speed. So let's learn it from the scratch. Let's continue with the free fall. The object or a person is released from rest. At the beginning, there is the only force of the uh, downward force of W acting on the object. But at, as the object is getting faster and faster, we expect a drag force against the motion. This drag force in low speed is proportional to the velocity, to the speed. A formula like k times v. k is a constant highly affected by density of the air and the shape of the object. We won't go over that constant, but keep in mind that anyway, during an experiment in a problem, we mostly take it to be um, a constant. A constant depending on the shape. So problem to problem, it will be different. When the speed is higher, even we may expect the drag force to be larger than that. So it may be something like bv squared, proportional to the v to the power of 2, to the square of the velocity, square of the speed. And here the coefficient is something different, like b. Anyway, even the speed is higher, we may have a drag force proportional to, to the v to the power of 3 or 4 even. So... The drag force is, does not have a constant formula, a specific formula. Depending on the speed, it may be different. But keep in mind, even if you select this one or that one or the other one as the drag force, the drag force is highly changing by velocity. It will result in a very important thing, which is called the terminal speed. Let's learn it. Terminal speed in free fall. I release an object from rest. From rest means that there is no drag force because drag force is highly dependent on the speed. No speed, no drag force. Here I expect the acceleration of the object to be g. Why? Because g actually is the net force acting on the object divided by the mass. Net force is w, so it's only g. But as the object is speeding up, we expect a drag force. This drag force here is opposing W, and so acceleration here would be the net force, F net, divided by mass. The F net will be W minus the drag force. So as the upstairs here is less than W, we expect an acceleration less than G. What about the terminal speed? What do we mean by terminal speed? Terminal speed is a speed at which the drag force can easily cancel the W. So if the FD here is equal to W, we expect no acceleration because acceleration is F net divided by mass, but there is no net force because these two forces cancel each other. So acceleration will be zero. So at terminal speed, there is no acceleration. Keep in mind that if the drag force cancels the W in free fall, this is the terminal speed. What about the car or an airplane? It is almost like that, but it's not uh, the W that runs the object. For example, let's say, let me change the color of my penya. Here I have an airplane hmm, moving rightward. Let's say this is the thrust force FT equal to 40,000 newtons the drag force at the beginning is not that big but anyway as the airplane is, is speeding up we expect larger fd finally the fd is going to be equal to 40,000 newtons here the airplane will get the terminal speed it won't accelerate anymore this is why the speed of airplane even if you apply a constant continuous thrust force will not be infinite Okay, it's almost the same for a car. Let's consider acceleration time graph in free fall. 
As I told you at the beginning when you release the object from the rest, there is no drag force. So acceleration of the object is almost G. Okay. As the, the object is speeding up, the drag force is opposing W. And so the acceleration is something less than G. It's not zero, but less than G. But as the object gets the terminal speed, there is no acceleration. And so the object won't accelerate anymore. So the acceleration will start from G and tends to zero. The VT graph is, uh, has a shape in reverse shape. Actually, at the beginning, there is no speed, but it speeds up to VT. Finally, here, the velocity will be maximum, the speed is maximum, and acceleration will be zero. As you know, the acceleration is the a slope of the VT graph. So here the slope is high, less, less, and zero. So when the object gets terminal speed, no acceleration and maximum speed. Keep in mind that afterward, the object will have a constant velocity uniform motion. There is something very important and tricky. How to find the value of the terminal speed? It's highly uh, uh, affected by the formula you use in uh, drag force. Let's say the drag force according to the shape and aerodynamics of the system is found by the kV. It is proportional to V with a constant like k. Okay. Uh, at terminal speed, the drag force is kVt. Actually, here we emphasize by a footnote, by a, an index here for V to uh, confirm the terminal speed. Okay. kVt. And here I put the equal mg is W is equal to kVt. And here I can find Vt to be mg over k. What if the F is proportional to Vt square? It's uh, nothing that challenging. You just uh, keep it like that. It's, uh, let's say it's kV square. It's V square and it's V square. So it will be something like a square of mg over k. It is not that challenging. So don't worry about that. Just keep in mind that for finding the terminal speed, you should put Ft equal to W. What about the airplane or the car and so forth? It's very similar. If you have an airplane here, and if you have, as I told you, I don't know, the thrust force to be 40,000 Newton. Here I have a drag force. Let's say the drag force for the airplane is BV square because it has... Uh, a very high speed. So here I put BV square in terminal speed to be equal to 40,000. So here, according to the given value for B, I can easily find the terminal speed for that airplane. That's all. Okay. Let's consider the VT graph of a parachute. Parachute is a very tricky uh, motion. The reason is that at the beginning of the free fall, when the person uh, is released from the airplane, it jumps out. Anyway, at the beginning, the um, a speed is um, zero, so there is no drag force. But, but the person will speed up to a terminal speed like that, as you know. Forget about the parachute for, for the time being. Let's say that the person has no parachute, nothing. Anyway, it will have a terminal speed here. This is VT. Why well, you should keep in mind that this terminal speed is not the only thing you can rely on. Anyway, it's very high speed and the person needs a parachute to have a safe landing. Then you may open the parachute. When the parachute opens, uh, there is something very different. What do I mean by different? The drag force, as I told you, is proportional to V square. But the constant of this proportionality, this coefficient, as I told you, it's highly affected by the shape of the object. So, as the parachute has a very large canopy, it has a different K. Different K means that the, the form, sorry, a KV. The formula is the same, V square, V, whatever, but K may be different K. So, you will have a different terminal speed. Let's say the terminal speed is mg divided by K or let's say terminal speed is square of mg divided by k. Depending on the formula you use, fd is equal to kv square or kv. 
whatever. It's not that important. Anyway, the terminal speed is affected by K. Different K, different terminal speed. So when I open the parachute, I expect something different. All the system will go to another terminal speed. And this terminal speed is here. The new terminal speed you experience according to the new coefficient. You, you, you have another coefficient because you have opened the parachute and it has a different aerodynamics. So the first terminal speed is according to, let's say it's VT1, is according to a person um, without any parachute. And here, the case with a parachute, when you open the parachute. Anyway, at the end, the person will have a very small, a few centimeters uh, when they touch the ground and then they land safely. That's all. This is a parachute. So in the parachute case, you should keep in mind that you have different terminal speeds. First, without parachute and then with the parachute. That's all. It was all the lesson. Now let's uh, solve a few problems. A skydiver of weight 600 Newton jumps out an airplane. Okay? The drag force is given by FD is equal to 10.2V. As you see, this drag force is proportional to V. And the K, the coefficient, is 10.2 in this case. Find her terminal speed in the air. How to find it? I told you. FD is 10.2V against the W. When it is equal to weight, you will have terminal speed. So in terminal speed, you can use 10.2 VT is equal to 600. That's all. So you can easily find the terminal speed of that person to be 58.8 meter per second, according to the numerical values given. Look at this question. A car of mass 1200 kg with an initial acceleration of 4 meter per second square speeds up with a constant forward driving force to a top speed of 50 meter per second. So notice here the top speed, the terminal speed is given to be 50 meter per second. At this speed, the resistive force is given by equation F equals BV square. Here, the formula is different, BV square. Determine the value B. Okay, how to find the B? It's very easy. Let's start from the beginning. Here, the car starts from the rest and it accelerates uh, for 4 meter per second square. Okay, F is equal to MA. So, I use the Newton's uh, second law of motion. And then I just plug in the mass, 1200, multiplied by 4. The acceleration, I will get 4800 Newton as the driving force of the car. The car will keep this driving force up to terminal speed and even after that. But here, we suppose that the car has got the terminal speed 50 meter per second. So here, we expect no acceleration. Why? Because the BV square, this drag force, has cancelled the forward force. So the object won't accelerate anymore. Here I put it, put it equal to BV square, but I emphasize on the terminal speed 50 to the power of 2 here. That's all. So you can easily find the B, the coefficient. That's all. This was the last question. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for participating in this lesson. And thank you that you appreciate learning. See you in the next video.